We're gonna go over the encoder calibration for the 544 Plus. This calibration is not required on setup, but if you replace a computer board or the motor, you will have to do this calibration. So the first thing we're gonna do is arrow right. We're gonna press our wrench. We're gonna use a different password. This one is four, three, two, four. We're gonna go to the screwdriver, and here we have all of our calibrations. Now this calibration has to be done in car mode. If you try to do it in truck mode, it will alert you to go back out here and change it to car mode. So we're just gonna do that now. That's this button. So now we're all set up. We're also gonna go ahead and lock the shaft. We're not gonna put the pressure ring on it. We're just gonna lock the shaft with the pedal. It's required for this. And then we'll press our encoder and we'll lower the hood. And this thing is gonna spin for a really long time, an inordinate amount of time. An amount of time that's gonna make you think something is wrong. It is not wrong. Thank you. So uh, the shaft is done spinning. We've got our green check mark. We always have to hit that. Now we're back to our calibrations. Next calibration I'm gonna do is the 3D gauge. You will have to do this calibration when you install this gauge. It is not activated until you calibrate it or if you replace it. So we'll go to the ruler because it's a measuring gauge. And this one is a, it's a width gauge. So we'll hit the width gauge button and it's gonna ask us to release the shaft if it was previously locked. And then it's gonna have you take your gauge and place it right on the end of your airlock shaft. Then press the snowflake key. It'll now have you move it to the flange, just the edge of the flange. Hold it steady. Again, snowflake key. We get our green check mark. Return the gauge to home. Press green check mark. Our next calibration is the distance diameter gauge. This one, again, is not gonna need to be calibrated on setup. Um, in the, all the balancers I've put in, I haven't had to do this yet. Um, but again, if you replace a board, you will have to do all of the calibrations. So we'll go our yellow key, and it's gonna have us pull out the diameter gauge and rest it on the top of this flange. And then press the snowflake. Notice the number 311 in the top left corner of the screen. When you pull the gauge out and hang it on the backing plate, the number on the top right of the screen must be plus or minus one of the number on the left. In this case, the number on the right would need to be 310, 311, or 312. If not, the machine will give you an error and the calibration cannot go forward. To fix this problem, place the gauge at its resting point, or home, power the machine off, then back on, and restart the calibration process. Next, we'll rotate the gauge 180 degrees to the largest part of the barrel of the shaft. We'll hit our snowflake, holding that gauge in place while it records that. Then we'll go to the third step, the second to smallest step on the shaft. We'll do the same thing. Now, we're gonna return this gauge to home and we need like a uh, 15, 16 inch steel wheel. What we're looking to do here is we need to use a tape measure and we need to measure from lip to lip. Now this is a 15 inch tire, but as you can see from lip to lip, it's about 16 inches. So, I'm gonna take my phone because I don't know what 16 inches in in millimeters and I'm gonna do that conversion. 16 inches to millimeters. And uh, the thing in your pocket that attaches to satellites will give you that answer. 
then we'll just use our plus or minus keys and we're gonna make this number, this is in millimeters. So we wanna make this number match what 16 inches is or where that lip is, which is 406 millimeters. We'll take a cone, we'll go ahead and put this wheel on the balancer. And I'm not balancing anything right now, so I'll come from the outside. All right, I have an now I need to hold this gauge right where I took that measurement and then press the snowflake. What this is telling the gauge is this wheel, this surface is 406 millimeters. You're moving this gauge to it and now it knows right where 16 inches is. This gauge is calibrated. Press your OK and we're done with gauge calibration. The last calibration we'll do is a weight calibration. You can use your 15 inch steel wheel here. It can be balanced or unbalanced. If uh, you just go to Harbor Freight and buy it off the shelf, that'll be fine. Um, or if you buy a balancer, it can be pre-balanced. So we'll press our weight calibration. The first thing we wanna do is enter the parameters Now, we don't have the calibration weight on here. The calibration weight comes with the balancer. It's a 100 gram weight, which is also 3.5 ounces. We're gonna leave that off right now. Then we're gonna lower the hood, and we're gonna go ahead and spin it. All right. Now, we need to take our calibration weight and we need to put it at 12 o'clock top dead center. If you have existing weights on your wheel, you want to pick a spot that does not have existing weights on each side because you're going to put this weight on the outside, spin it, then you're going to move it directly across the wheel and spin it again. So we get to 12 o'clock. Go ahead and put our cow weight on. Then we're gonna lower the hood. All right, and we'll take our wheel, we'll find our calibration weight, we'll rotate that up here to 12 o'clock, take it off the outside, move it straight across to the inside, and spin it again. So the weight calibration is complete. We'll click OK. And then we just left arrow back to the home screen and you're ready to go.